Hey, I'm Nick Bly, and welcome to Bye for Plot Tuesday, the 10th of May. Today on the show, League Bands, Ball Skills, QTEs. Alright, here's what's been making headlines, and first up, things are ugly in professional League of Legends right now. And not just because the game itself is ugly. Right, Games has swung the ban hammer down hard on two of North America's biggest LOL teams, Renegades and TDK. Riot found that both teams had breached competition regulations by colluding with each other. They've also been accused of compromising player welfare and safety, and as a result, will no longer be able to enter teams into Riot-sanctioned competitions. Renegades managers Chris Badawi and Christopher Mickles have been banned from associating or affiliating with any LOL team entering a Riot League event, with Mickles under a year-long suspension and Badawi suffering a lifetime ban. The heads of TDK, Chris and Sean Shim, have also been banned indefinitely, but they can appeal the decision in January of 2019. There's a lot more to each of the allegations that led to the bans, but Hingers will have more info on that and how this will affect competitive League of Legends on Well Played this week. But sticking with LOL, Jeffrey Lin, the lead designer of Social Systems, has left Riot. Lin was responsible for trying to find ways to counter League of Legends' infamously vitriolic community through projects like The Tribunal and Honor Initiative. He failed, but he's okay with that. In a farewell blog, Lin said, Impossible problems have an irresistible allure to me, and I think it's time for a new challenge. <laughs> Bravo, Lin. Keep headbutting those brick walls so the rest of us don't have to. Moving on, and you will soon be able to pee yourself from the comfort of your own couch. In a discussion posted to Five Nights at Freddy's 4 Steam page, Mr. Cafecito asked if there was a chance the series would be ported to console, and Five Nights at Freddy's developer Scott Cawthorn replied with a yes. According to Scott, he's in talks with third parties who will be able to port the games to consoles. However, particular consoles and developers are yet to be confirmed. And finally, Capcom have hinted at new entries to the Resident Evil series. The publisher's fiscal report for 2015 teases that the series will be launching a full-scale offensive in the second half of the new fiscal year, following the release of Resident Evil Umbrella Core in June. It is currently unknown what Capcom means by this, as it could simply be reference to celebrating the series' 20th birthday. Or perhaps they've finally finished work on a real T-virus. Only time will tell. Alright, moving on now to Thing of the Day with the ninth most favourite Thing of the Day title for 2016 for the first couple of months. Brought to you by Dicate. Dicate, of course, being the person who made it, not some brand sponsoring this segment. But if you're interested in sponsoring, contact Pete. There's a new meta in Overwatch, B-Ball Trappin. Player Loaf has found a way to attach Junkrat's bear traps to basketballs, allowing other players to bounce the traps into the opposition. Touchdown! That's a wicket! Oh my god! We gotta get it to mid. <laughs> if we trap somebody... Oh my god! <laughs> I'm joined now by Hex to discuss our talk through. Or talk through our talk through is probably better. <laughs> uh, today's question comes in from Pie of Epicness, good who name. says, "Yeah, pretty good, pretty good name." Uh, who says, "Quick time events, yay or nay?" And that's the whole question. Mm. So we're just talking quick time. Uh, Hexany, talk to me. Yay or nay? <laughs> yeah, yay or nay? And I then and it, let's make the answer as short as the question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think it really depends on the application of the quick time event. Mm -hmm. I mean, from memory, um, it was that uh, Shenmue game that yes. made them really popular. Yes, yeah. They've been around before that. They've been around since at least 1983 with uh, Dragon's Lair on Laserdisc. Had, you know, full uh, animation sequences that you would activate new ones with quick time events. But it was Yu Suzuki, who was the uh, director of Shenmue, uh, who kind of made them popular and coined the phrase quick time events. But since then, they've gone through many iterations, I guess, where they were hated for a huge part of gaming's career. Why do you think that was? I, I think they serve as a really great device to give you a, a break from regular gaming and also yeah. keep you actively involved in cutscenes, which is awesome. But I yeah. think they can be overused as well. And I think it got to a point when they were just excessively used to cover loading. It's just like you need to lift this heavy yeah. thing and oh no, you're gonna drop it. So you're gonna keep, <laughs> and you're like mashing the keypad. And then you're like, have you ever like gotten to the point where you're 
some of the quick time events have a circle that you yep. have to fill. Yep. And you're like seriously mashing the key as hard as you can, and then it's somehow like getting less, and you're like, "There's no way yeah. I could push this button any faster." What do you want from me? Yeah, there's, uh, there is that weird thing where uh, I I know I would don't like a quick time event when I'm playing like this, and then suddenly I'm playing like this, mm. and I'm and I've changed because I'm like my thumb you isn't have to fast re enough. Reposition. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think that's a good point that they are used a lot to hide game things where new scenes are loading or yeah, whatever. Yeah, opening and, doors or, you know, yeah. passing through things. But I think the one that really made people hate them, at least from my perspective, is is in games like God of War where they're used in boss fights. Yeah. I mean, there are so many reasons why that sucks. For me, the big one is that I'm, I'm playing this cool moment and I'm doing all this fighting and it's based on skill and then suddenly I move into and quick time. suddenly it's like a guitar hero. Like. Yeah, and it's, and it's really disappointing that the amazing epic stuff that you're doing is is not in your control and it would be better if it was actually just a cutscene because then you could sit back and admire it whereas what you're actually doing is panicking that this little circle is going to come up and you're going to hit the wrong version of the button. Yeah, especially because you know it takes a fair amount of coordination and skill for the rest of the fight. You yeah. Know, and you've gotten to a point where you're you know, skilled enough to get through that, yeah. and then to be to be set back because you missed trying. Because you thought like square was circle. Yeah, exactly. And 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 also, and if you're playing at a harder difficulty and they make the the time really short. Exactly. Like it's so it's so frustrating. And and it took, I think it took developers ages to figure out how to do them quote unquote properly. Sometimes you know, there's the version where the the quick time event icon is always in the same area of the screen. So you go okay. Uh, like, what is it now? Is it a circle? Is it a triangle? Is it X? Whatever. And then there's the one where it moves depending on the sort of placement on the controller. Oh, so yeah. it would, if it's up the top, then it's triangle, and you go, okay, I know what that is. And while I go, that's handy, it's like I'm focusing on this spot, and then suddenly there's one over here, I'm going, what? <laughs> and then I'm switching between Xbox and PlayStation, and I'm yeah, screwed. Yeah, yeah. I'm notoriously bad at noticing things that are, you know, on. So am I. Elsewhere where the action is happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm focused on Nathan Drake's butt. And anything that isn't Nathan Drake's butt, then I'm, <laughs> doesn't exist to me. I think where quick time events have kind of evolved really interestingly, though, is in um, some of the more narrative cinematic games, yeah. like Beyond Two Souls, and yes. more recently Until Dawn. That was um, very quick time heavy because obviously, um, very narrative heavy game that you're not really doing a lot of movement in. Yeah. Um, and you're using quick time events to kind of make your way through a section or even determine whether you're spotted by someone or yeah. not, you know. And and I, I And actually, that raises the stakes and it's exciting. Yeah, and, and I think that, that they've embraced that as being pretty much the only mechanic in the game. The, the most of Until Dawn is just those quick time events and sometimes you're wandering around actually controlling a character. But I actually like that because I go, that's how you're making me feel involved in this. Yeah. And because you haven't set a precedent that there's other kinds of gameplay before this that it's not a skill-based action game or whatever, and then in certain moments we've gone to this, then I'm not going, oh, this is not the game I signed up for. Yeah. Like, that is the game I signed up for, was an interactive movie. Yeah. And Uncharted does it a lot as well, where you're you're doing like, you're just doing things in between scenes that I think, like you said, keeping you involved in a cutscene is a good way to make it feel as though you're not just sitting back, just watching a movie for a while. Yeah, and I don't mind the occasional, like, you know, Nathan Drake is, like, on a, a ledge and then the ledge breaks and you've got to hit it, yeah. triangle or something to make sure that you don't fall off it. Like, that's always exciting. It's like, oh, because that, that really does in the most effective way simulate what it's like to be slipping and then have to make a Yeah, exactly, grab. yeah. Because if you miss that, you know, you're not quick enough, then, then you fall and you die. That's actually probably a good point, that the way that they're most effectively used is when you need to make a decision and that the character needs to make a quick decision and you two, like, having a controller, the mm -hmm. only way you can really do it is to just choose a button to press. And as opposed to, like, in God of War fights or anything where they're doing those big ones, it's not... Me hitting triangle is not the <laughs> in, uh, like real life version of Kratos hooking your forehead and peeling your skin back. Do you know what I mean? Oh. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, but it's it's interesting though too. Like um, quick time events used to be a big part of the Telltale games. And yes. As that progressed, they would be they became less and less because I think people just found them really annoying. A and I think again because the main gameplay mechanic of the Telltale games is dialogue choices and yeah. so when you give me something that isn't a dialogue choice then I go no I'm playing dialogue choice game I'm not playing press triangle game. Yeah, yeah. and it just wasn't implemented well enough I think for it to be like a successful mechanic for them in that particular game. So do you think that with VR coming out will quick time events exist or will it be something else? 
Like, like I imagine. I not considered the applications to VR, but I would imagine that you need some sort of reaction. Except you could make it, like, say we're playing until dawn, and there's a part where you're, you know, running down a path, and you need to pick like a way to go, yeah. and monster behind you or whatever. Then you could actually stick out a hand, and it would be like you're lunging towards that way, and that's the way that the game recognizes quick time. It, it would have to be responsive enough to be able to do that well. Yeah. Because I don't know that that we would necessarily be there yet. I haven't seen enough of the VR technology, but that would be a really annoying thing for you to be like reaching, yeah, <laughs> not and to just, be registering and not, properly, and nothing actually happening, and then you watch your. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're not long for this world, but in today's gaming, I don't mind them. I guess the the answer to the question, yay or nay, if I had to answer the question, and I do because it's my job, <laughs> my job is answering questions from people called pie of epicness. Uh, yay? Yeah, I say yay. Yeah? It's just they've got, but like anything, you need it needs to be implemented well, just used, balanced. used sparingly and well. I don't want them in every game, but I don't mind. And, when and not just to them. open doors and crates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Pie of Epic Nix. What's your response? What do you think? What's your answer? You you've written down three words here. I, I need a little more from you. And uh, everybody else watching, what do you think about quick time events? Yay or nay? And extrapolate a little bit. Let us know in the comments. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group, Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Byer, Pierre at GG at Monkey at Sam Key. She's at Hexdef. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day, classic graphic was sent in by Die Kate. Well done, Die Kate. You fought well, but the Pocketeers are a fickle bunch, and you need to. Fight harder for their top spot, love. Now tonight, Good Game is on. Yes. What are we looking at tonight? Uh, Alien Nation yep. and a little game called Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Also, Goose, Hingers and I talk about uh, Rocket League, Starcraft and Hearthstone expansions. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, can you give us a little, just a sneak peek of what the, like, give me a face of your Uncharted review. I don't think she likes it, guys. All right, make sure you check it out. 8.30 p.m. on ABC2. Until tomorrow, Nick Boyer. Hex out. That's what I meant to do. Oh, Nick. Yeah? Have you finished it? No, I'm... I finish nearly it. finished it. Finish it. I'm trying to finish it, but I don't want to finish it, because once I finish it, it's done. I know, but... Oh, finish it.